How many of you out there in my audience remember the scene from the movie Full Metal Jacket where the senior drill instructor is talking to a character called Private Joker and he asks him, do you love the Virgin Mary? This is, of course, they're getting ready for some type of a Christmas celebration. And Private Joker sounds off, responds that he does not, in fact, love the Virgin Mary. And this angers the senior drill instructor, and he confronts him to reinforce his position. He said, I don't believe I heard you correctly. And he once again states, Private Joker, that he does not, in fact, love the Virgin Mary. The senior drill instructor then punches him in the gut to see if he's going to stick by his position, and he does. He doesn't reverse his position. He then calls over Private Joker's squad leader, fires him, and then promotes him to squad leader. Why? It's one of the most iconic quotes in the entire movie. Private Joker is silly, and he's ignorant, but he's got guts. And guts is enough. You see, that's going to be kind of the focus of today's video. There's something going on right now that is battlefield of the mind that is critical, I think, for people to understand going forward in the next three to five months. There's going to be an issue of people who have guts, people who have the ability to stand by what they say, and people who don't, and will just be blown about by the winds of whatever is popular in social media, or in some circles, whatever might get them elected. If you'd like to get read in on the nuts and the bolts and the basic fundamental precepts of psychological operations, cognitive biases, and logical fallacies, would love to have you over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. Fair warning, it's not for everybody. Even the military puts you through extensive tests before they even allow you to try to train for psychological operations. You have to pass a huge battery of tests in the military. You can't just go to the military and say, you know what, I think psychological operations would be cool, sign me up. Nope. You've got to go through a whole bunch of screenings before they would even believe you're ready to take the training. Here, it's going to be open. One U.S. dollar per month and you're in. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. Love to have you over there. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. Now, without any further delay, let's get right to it. How many of you have seen this very strange statement from President Trump? He has called George Clooney a rat for not sticking by his support of Joe Biden. Now, those of you who are educated know that for a very long time, Donald Trump was not just a Democrat or a member of the Democrat Party. He was a huge big money cash donor to a lot of powerful Democrats, including Chuck Schumer. How many of you knew to this day the largest single recipient of Donald Trump money when he was a donor in the donor class is Chuck Schumer. So wouldn't he be able to look in the mirror and go, gosh, I guess I'm the biggest rat of all. If George Clooney changing his mind about Joe Biden and his candidacy makes him a rat, what does it make Donald Trump? And a few videos ago, I called this. I absolutely called this. Trump offers Biden chance to, quote unquote, redeem himself with debate. Why in the world would you do that? Why in the world, if you were truly just interested in winning and not just feeling good about winning, if you were interested in winning, why would you say, you know what? The American people saw everything they needed to see from Joe Biden in our first debate. This is no longer about ideas. This is about this man's cognitive ability to even express his ideas and to run the country in general. Donald Trump should be saying, the man should step down now. Donald Trump should be saying, the man should step down now as leader of North America, leader of the United States, leader of the free world. 
because it's not good for the country to have somebody this mentally compromised in charge. He should be saying that, but he's not saying that. He wants there to be another debate. He wants him to be in charge all the way up to the election. Why? Now, those of you who are saying, well, what did you call, Mucky? What did you call? Who remembers the, and here's the video, by the way, breaking Trump alert, President Biden now completely reverses course, devastating news for Trump. I made the allegation that if it was a football game and one team is a hugely hyped game, quintessential rivals, everybody goes to the game expecting a barn burner of a game and one team absolutely destroys the other, absolutely clobbers the other. And then the losing team comes out and says, well, offensive coordinator's wife left him and the quarterback didn't do very good in his finals and we had a lot of defensive players who had stubbed toes because they you know, got up in the middle of the night and didn't know where the end table was. All this crap, you know, all these excuses. And then, in a very bizarre turn of events, the winning team, the coach of the winning team comes out and says, you know what? Yeah, we agree. You know, we agree. You know, our rival didn't play their best game. They didn't. They had a lot of things going on. And we're going to go ahead. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to call that game an exhibition. We're going to put it into the exhibition game class, and then we're going to reschedule another real game for later on that, that everybody can then judge us on. For those of you who haven't read this, this is from Deadline. Donald Trump slams George Clooney for a New York Times essay urging Joe Biden to exit presidential race. There have been people calling for Joe Biden to leave the presidency, not just the presidential race, for a long time because of his lack of cognitive ability. So why would Trump slam Clooney? It tells him to get out of politics. Donald Trump was for years and for years, I mean, well over 10 years, probably longer, because he switched from Democrat to reform, to Republican, to Democrat, to Republican. For years and years and years, he was standing shoulder to shoulder with Clooney, giving money to Democrats. Big money. He was far, far wealthier than, than Clooney's ever been. So how can he call him a rat? And when you read, here's the crazy part. When you read the New York Times op-ed, and I'll give you this link, it's just the op-ed. It's only the words of... Clooney, what he says, even though you may not agree with him being a Democrat and his beliefs as a Democrat or his beliefs that Democrats should lead, what he says about Joe Biden is eminently rational, thoughtful, and intelligent and absolutely correct. See, if this was a Republican saying this, I don't think anybody would have a problem with it. I mean, he calls for a whole bunch of people, you know, younger Democrats to step up and talk about what their vision for the future is. Why is this a problem? Now, here's a great analogy to take away from this. And I'm going to go ahead and play this clip so that I don't misquote the Patriot nurse. Her most recent video, The Alarming Decline in Birth Rates, explained. She says something about what's going on in this country and what it might mean for the future. Now, if you're of a right mind and you are not emotionally driven, you will take away from this a proper thought, a proper course of action. But if you're not, I'm going to show you what a lot of people would take from it. Here we go. Her words, Patriot Nurse. The man is the head of the family. In order for men to feel like they can reasonably take on that responsibility, they have to feel confident in providing for that family. And the jobs report coming out really tells the tale of how bad it is right now for the native-born American. Over the past quarter, the majority of the growth in jobs has not been in the private sector. It has not been in full-time work. It's been approximately one-third government growth. And the majority of the other jobs that have been added have effectively been gig economy work meaning no benefits, no health insurance, nothing that essentially would provide the securities that the past two generations have expected as normative for starting a family and some type of 
essential bedrock reassurance financially for being able to grow a family with. Also, when you consider that almost a million jobs were lost by native-born Americans and over a million and some, I would say it was a million and a half jobs were added primarily in the foreign-born workers department, there is a real consequence to, to immigration and especially unchecked, unfettered, open borders, illegal immigration. And that is that people are not able to pay their bills at home. Okay, so the facts are, based on the graphics that she showed, that native-born American men are losing jobs, losing the ability to provide for a family and raise a family, while foreign-born men, foreign-born workers, are adding jobs at an astounding rate. So, theoretically speaking, what you could take from this, if you were the emotionally driven type, is that, oh, so here's what she's advising young, white females looking to start a family to do. She's advising them, well, you know, if you want to have a man in your life that is able to provide an income that will allow you to be a mom, then you should seek someone who is foreign-born to start a family with. If for no other reason, the skin color of your children will give them a huge advantage in the future, because clearly this is the direction we're going, for them finding jobs. You see, if you were to find somebody of your own race and have kids, they would be largely discriminated against and be in a class of people that were losing jobs. So clearly, the choice that you should make, being a young white female in America should be to seek a man who is, at least in appearance, foreign-born or a person of color. Now, is that what she was saying? It absolutely is not what she was saying. She was just reporting the state of things right now. She was just reporting the state of things right now. It wasn't advice saying that because of this, even though everything she said would lead up to a conclusion that some might draw from that. It's not what she was saying. It's not what she was saying. She's saying, this is what we're facing. These are the consequences. It wasn't advice about what you should do. So once again, I ask the question, do you want to win or do you want to feel good about winning. You see, what if Donald Trump was rational and had the same definition of win as you and I do, meaning that all the things that he says in the campaign trail, he believes about America. Let me say this again. If he actually believed all of the things that he was saying about what he was allegedly going to do when he became president, if he believed all of those things, when George Clooney came out and made that incredibly rational, thoughtful statement about Joe Biden and what Joe Biden should do, he would have said, yeah, as much as I disagree with George Clooney's politics, even though I was a Democrat for years and years and years and years and years, even though I disagree with George Clooney's politics, his statement about Joe Biden's current mental state, the future of this country, and the presidential race was spot on. It was exactly spot on. And just as a human being, just as a human being right now, I don't know how you see this as anything other than elder abuse. And him being another older fellow, another guy who might be facing something like this in the not so distant future himself. Pray, you know, pray God he doesn't. I'm not trying to wish bad on the man, but he could theoretically be very close to some state of dementia like Joe at his age. Could be less than a decade away. Who knows? Wouldn't you say as a human being, for the sake of Joe Biden, for the sake of Joe Biden, the man, not the politician, and his loved ones and his family, he needs to step down. As a human being, he needs to step down. Not because of his politics. 
if there's anything to be taken away from this is that perhaps we need to be looking for the real villains of the last three and a half years. If this man is so mentally incapacitated right now, then what we can say is there are true villains in the background that were, and I'm going to repeat this once again, they were responsible for the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. They were with, responsible for all of the uh, vax mandates. They were responsible for the border. They were responsible for Bidenomics and Bidenflation. Everything we've assigned to this guy, everything we've assigned to him, we have misattributed because there were people drugging this guy up, abusing this old man and pointing him in front of cameras. And now it's just gotten to the point where he can't even fake it anymore, regardless of the medications. He can't fake it anymore, regardless of the medications. That should be what's taken away from this. See, just like with what the Patreon nurse said, you could take you could take away something completely different from it if you were a narcissist. But if you were thinking about what she said, you wouldn't take that away. She wasn't counseling, you know, people about what they should or shouldn't do, but listening to what she said, you could definitely see an agenda. Not her agenda. Let me say this again: not her agenda making the video but the agenda of those who were responsible for the statistics that she was sharing. The agenda of those who were responsible for the statistics that she was sharing. So, once again, I will leave it there. God bless. Battlefield of the mind. Thank you so, so much, everybody who has joined us the Patreon channel. I very, very much appreciate it. $1 level, $5 level. God bless all of you. Next 48 hours, we're going to have a brand new video up there. So those of you who are there right now, stay tuned. Believe me, it's going to be one of those knock your socks off kind of videos. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.